Welcome guys. I am going to show you how to create a master material in Unreal. This is the Epic Games Launcher. And uh, we're going to jump right in here. What you're going to want to do is launch Unreal Engine. If you don't have it, just go to the Unreal Engine tab, Library. And uh, you might have to add a version here. But then launch the one you have. You may be working on a newer one, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and launch. Oh, didn't necessarily need to do that. Because I have to run it. Uh, it's okay. There we go. And we're going to want to create a new project. No starter content. Um, you could do this in C++ or Blueprint. I think uh, let's just go ahead and do it in Blueprint uh, for the sake of the pretty background that it gives us. We're going to do no starter content. Don't forget to name your project and choose a location for it. We're going to call this Master Material Tutorial. And I'm going to make sure to place it in a new project. Call this Master Material Tutorial. Select that folder. Name and no starter content. Create project. So the idea of a master material <clears throat> is that, uh, or, or really how materials work in Unreal is, it's different than say in 3ds Max, where in 3ds Max you kind of have, uh, for example, like a standard material or these physical materials that come with all these sort of robust features built up, built into them and all you have to do is drag out the standard material into the slate editor and you have these things uh, for you to change. In Unreal we're going to be working with what's called a node based editor like the slate editor, editor but in this case it's a lot more complex uh, a lot more flexible and uh, what we're going to do sorry I'm going to adjust my Unreal here, it's sort of the way I like to work. It's kind of like, I kind of like have mine set up, uh, to set up. I kind of like having mine set up like 3ds Max. Okay. In the content browser, I'm gonna go ahead and create some folders to begin our uh, world here. You can think of an Unreal project as an entire game in itself. And so we just created a game. And it, our game was called Master uh, Material Tutorial. <laughs> and uh, this one's going to be called, uh, we're just going to create some folder structures here. Maps is what you would consider levels. So uh, I'm actually going to go File, Save As, say Current As, and I'm going to save into our Maps folder. And I'm going to make this level called Sandbox 01. I'm going to create that. I'm going to create a couple other folders in here, materials, whoops, textures, I'm going to go ahead and uh, activate my viewport here, and hit G on my keyboard to go into game mode, and I'm going to drag out a sphere from the modes panel. Photoshop in a bit but for now I just want to start with uh, creating a new material and I'm gonna go to the materials folder in our structure here and uh, right click out in this open area in the content browser and say new material and I'm gonna call this material call it Big Lee which is my last name I'm gonna call it standard so it's kinda of like my standard material and this one's going to be a master. Immediately I'm going to jump in, double click on this material here. And uh, we have our node based material editor for this material. Now each one of these is uh, its own, it's not like the slate editor where you can have multiple materials in here. 
In this case, I double click on it and it is this material itself. This is the Bigley Standard Master Material Node Editor. And so, some things uh, you'll need to know, you probably have a bar over on the right hand side. It has all your parameters in it. I go ahead and close that because it's just as easy as right clicking. And you have all of the same things right here, like constant vectors, texture parameters, yada yada yada, all that stuff. We'll end up getting to. Uh, I want to set up just a very basic texture, so follow along while I do this. I'm going to hold, uh, you can either right click and type in constant 3 vector and create it that way, or what you can do is hold 3 on your keyboard and then click. That's a left click in your slate, <laughs> not slate, uh, node editor here. And that gave us a constant 3 vector. I'm going to plug it in. And I'm just going to change the color to something loud, like a pink, magenta. I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to set up the other basic uh, values we need to sort of make this a, a sort of a complete basic material. And so in that case it would be, uh, so this is our constant 3 vector, it gives us a color, 3 values, RGB. And uh, for metallic we're going to hold 1 on our keyboard and click and that gives us what's called a constant vector. And I'm going to plug that into metallic and this is just one single value. I'm going to go ahead and set it to 1. Metalness works on kind of a 0 to 1 scale, you can think of it as a 0% to 100%. Uh, metalness and what it controls is really how the material reflects. Uh, they say metallic the map itself that tends to be created is called a metalness map and it describes uh, what parts of the material are plastic like or what parts of the material are metal and so in the case of one that is full metal in the case of zero that is full non-metal. And uh, we're not really going to get into uh, in-between values in this tutorial. I just want to keep it basic uh, and pretty uh, black and white if you will. Zero to one, zero and one. Um, I'm going to control C, copy, and control V, paste that uh, constant value and I'm going to plug it into roughness. I'm going to hit control V again plug it into specular and on the specular one oops, I'm gonna make that 0.5 value I'm not really gonna talk about specular in here and we're gonna put our roughness say at a value of 0.5 just for aesthetic purposes eh, maybe 0.25 for aesthetic purposes so you can kinda see what we have going on here so we have a full metal material with a roughness 0.25 and so we you know our material is reflecting the environment around itself and it's also diffusing light uh, as the as the uh, the microsurface of this material is uh, 0.25 is describing the microsurface of the material it's rough by a value of 0.25 which is diffusing uh, our light and blurring our reflection for us I want to plug in another constant 3 vector, so you can hold 3 on your keyboard and click. And uh, we're going to plug it into the normal map, and we want to put a really just a solid blue material in here, so a value of 1. This is kind of how Unreal reads flat normal maps, is a full blue material. And we can just hit apply here, and then make sure to save that. And then we'll look at our material in the world. And there's our material. Now the reason we want to be working with master materials and, ins and uh, well the reason we're creating materials is because, or this master material is because we want to use it as sort of the foundation for our instanced materials. And so what I mean is if say for example I wanted to create sort of a rainbow of colors here well I'd have to go 
you know, with what you've been taught so far. Material, and I have to create another material, and I call it blah, blah, blah. And then I have to go into that material, and I'd have to re-plug in all of my vectors, and I have to change the values, metallic. And I have to reset all this up just to get a basic material like that again. Now, like I said, in Max, you're kind of used to having all these parameters laid out for you, and that's, you know, it's great. You could think of Unreal more like we are building the material itself. We're building that standard material. And so what we're going to do is sort of set the foundation here and what kind of parameters we can pull out and then we'll use instances. And so I'll show you how to go about doing that. Uh, what we need to do is go in here and on, on, on these parameters, I'm sorry, on these uh, nodes that we have out here, we're gonna right click, say on the first one here, and we're gonna convert it to parameter. And it's immediately gonna ask us to name it. I'm just gonna call it albedo color and then I'm going to do the same thing for all of these uh, or for really just the, uh, the metalness the metallic I'm going to convert this and call it metalness value and then I'm going to go to the roughness convert to parameter we're going to call this roughness value we're not going to do this for the normal map because normal maps are just going to stay uh, either a flat normal map color or we're going to load a bitmap into it and so in this case this one will work out just fine for a flat normal map we'll talk about how to set up this standard master material to load into uh, your own textures here in a while. Let's go ahead and apply and save. So if I go into that content browser, right click on that material and say create material instance, it's going to create another material for us and this material is based off of our master material. So if I say or let's just name this and call it uh, Metal Red or something along those lines. And I'm going to double click on that instance material. And you can see here that the instanced material layout is not a node based layout. It removes that node based system and gives us whatever quote-unquote parameters we expose here so I went and I had converted these two parameters and it allows us to change if we check these on it allows us to change these values now previously say if I turn these back into right click convert to constant convert to constant convert to constant and then I say apply you'll notice all my settings disappear and it's because we're not exposing these parameters to be changeable. That's what converting to parameters is going to do for us. What if I can undo that? Yes, I can. And so when we converted each one of these nodes into a parameter, we apply, it exposes them inside of the instance for us. And so we can go over here to the instance and actually change these values now. So I can say set this to red and you'll notice that my master is currently that still obnoxious pink color and then we have an instanced red we can also go in here and change the metalness value Oops. say to zero convert it to a non-metal plastic we can also adjust the roughness. I turn this back up to a metal so you can see this. But now I can adjust the roughness individually.
and so if we wanted now we can and when you do this make sure you're always creating an instance from the master material and you're not creating an instance from an instance so I'm gonna go ahead and create another instance from that master material maybe we call this one plastic red and I'm gonna double click it go into my instance parameters over here I'm gonna check these on convert it to make this red and then that metalness value is zero and then maybe a roughness of 0 0.1 0 0.15 go back to that metal red and give this a 0 0.25 there we go Okay, so now anything that we add to this standard master material, it's gonna, it's going to, I mean, as long as we make it parameters, uh, it's going to feed into these instances that we've already created. So as we update our master, it's going to update into these other instances. So I do want to make some changes because this is a little bit too basic of a material. It really just allows us to pull some basic parameters. We, uh, you know, uh, we want to be able to load textures in at some point. And how we can do that. Oh, first before we do that, let's talk about this. Uh, let's add this max, uh, max amount to our sliders. I'm going to set this to 1 we want our metalness value to top out at a value of one and same for our roughness value we want it to max out at a value of one and if i hit apply go and double click on these uh metalness values you'll see that my bar actually has a little even uh, like a progress bar almost a little bar a percentage bar that i can now scroll from zero to one and it tops out we can even set the default value and so maybe the metalness value I want to default to zero and then a roughness value default yeah 0.25 default to 0.25 I don't mind that and I'm gonna hit apply I'm gonna let's save that little asterisk went away because we saved it. So the other uh, the other things I want to add in here are the options to load in a bitmap or a texture if you will. And how we can do that uh, I'm gonna hold T and hit T on my keyboard and this is called a texture sample and uh, we will convert it to a parameter here in a bit but first I want to go ahead and create what's called a static switch and we're going to switch around our nodes here um, let's go ahead and convert this into a sorry, switch oh, I guess I can't right click this one we're going to go right click static switch parameter and add a static switch parameter what we want to call this uh, is what it's going to be called in our instance material and so you'll understand here in a minute when I call this uh, <laughs> call this node use albedo texture and so it's a true false statement we can we're going to use a texture or we're not going to use a texture and so if we're not going to use a texture in case of false so we're not going to use a texture we're going to plug it into false in case, in which, so if we're not using a texture we're going to use a solid color 
And if we are going to use a texture, we're going to use the texture sample over here. And I'm just going to rewire my, my nodes here. Like this. And I'm going to set this up for all of my my node structure here. Just bear with me. And actually what I can do, copy, let's copy all of this. Just this and this. Copy, paste. And instead of use albedo texture, we're going to call this use metalness texture. Paste again. And this one's gonna be gonna be called use roughness texture. Let's plug our nodes in, re rewire this roughness. Same for our metalness. And then I'm going to do the same at the bottom. Control paste, control V. For our normal map. Here's our default value. You can actually check if you want the default the default values on. I want my standard material to be first basic, and then by choice, I want to be able to check on and turn my, my textures or plug my textures in. So we're going to leave that default value to off or false. And make sure I name these right. Oh, forgot this last one. Use normal texture. And what I want to do is plug some little texture maps into this. And I actually have Photoshop open because what we're going to do is we're going to create a sort of a, a dummy texture. So I'm going to say create new. We're going to set this to pixels. And I'm going to create some really small textures, 32 by 32, for example, really small. I don't want it to take up a lot of space. And control R. I'm gonna bring up my my ruler here, and I'm gonna make a checker. Easy enough. File save as. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. I don't particularly care. Um, you guys should save this in a location that you're going to sort of permanently reference. And so, um, actually, let me just do that as well. So I'm going to go into my documents, my Unreal project folder where I created this, Master Material Tuts. And I'm going to create what's called a source folder in here. And this is where we can store our sort of master, uh, master files that we create. So if we create a texture inside of Photoshop and we save it as a texture file, say a Targa or a PNG, uh, and then we drag that into Unreal. Unreal creates its own file type uh, to compress it called a DDS file, and it's going to uh, simplify the PNG or the Targa that we, we drag in, and it's going to put it in its own folder structure. And so I don't want to mix my source files with Unreal's version of the file. And so I create a source file outside of here, source, and I'm going to create a repeat structure, materials, textures, maps. And so maps, you could say, would be where my, say my max files go. And I can, you know, I'm creating uh, levels or uh, I'm creating assets. Uh, that should be another one I would have. Assets. And uh, we're going to save this into textures. 
I'm going to create a folder called basic and then in here PNG we're going to save this as a checker just maybe just checker and save that mm -hmm. doesn't really matter Unreal is going to save it for us I'm going to create, let's turn my uh, ruler off. I'm actually wanting to create a solid white material. Just for forward thinking here, call it white. I'm not necessarily going to use this in In the tutorial, but this is kind of how I would approach setting up uh, some of these things. I know that I do want a flat normal map color, so I'm going to say RGB 128, 128, 256, <laughs> 255, and that's sort of our flat normal map color. I'm going to do a fill. My colors look off. Yeah. I was in CMYK. I accidentally hit Control Y on my keyboard. Save. We're gonna call this Normal PNG. And I think we're done with Photoshop. We can actually go back over to our Textures folder. I'm gonna to browse to where I saved my source textures under Master Material Tut Source Textures Basic. I'm going to take these four textures that I created and drag them into the textures folder. And uh, Unreal's letting me know the textured normal was imported as a normal map. Unreal has a special uh, conversion for our normal map color. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a special compression which tells Unreal how to treat this texture uh, it treats it a special way. I don't really want to get into it but it kind of has to do with that little blue color so if I were to say drag in this uh, texture sample here it matches and that's because Unreal recognized that normal color and uh, went ahead and compressed it for us uh, into a normal map compression so that Unreal can understand Uh, that language I guess that normal map okay so we have these texture samples here and these aren't parameters for us but you, you saw me just now how I dragged that over here and it loaded in that's one way to do it you could also uh, highlight one of these in the content browser like checker for example and then in the node editor I'm gonna hold T and I'm gonna click and that will auto load my checker or whatever I had selected, it'll auto load it in as a texture sample for me. I wanted to see if I could do all four. <laughs> Guess not. It's okay. So I'm actually going to delete these uh, texture samples. I mean, if you wanted, you could, uh, you know, there are other ways to do that too, dragging these in. I could highlight it and it shows up in my details. Uh, panel over here and I can actually just drag and drop you see it highlights in green letting me know that's where I can drag and drop it delete these and you see I'm getting these errors this is why we had to create these textures because I want to load a texture in here so that they don't error when we uh, are using this master material in our, in our scene so let's do checker I'm going to right click and I'm going to say convert to parameter and I'm going to name this albedo texture for the metalness we had a default value of zero which is black and so I'm going to do the same here say uh, highlight 
texture here. Hold T on my keyboard. Huh. Whoa. I'm gonna click. Plug that in. I'm gonna right click. Convert to parameter. I'm gonna call it metalness texture. And just sort of rinse and repeat. This parameter roughness texture. And then down here, I'm holding T again, I'm clicking with that highlighted, plug this in, convert to parameter, I call this normal texture. Now, when we go into our materials, and I take a look at Metal Red, for example, I now have new static switch parameters. <laughs> and look, use albedo texture, use metalness texture, use normal texture, use roughness texture, and I can turn these on. They have two check boxes. And as we turn these on, we get new slots for albedo textures where we could potentially load in different texture maps. So now in this particular case, if I wanted, I could load in a white, a white texture, I could load in <laughs> a whack normal map texture white, black, checker. But it defaults to checker because that's what we had loaded in in our master material. Same for the metalness, it defaults to the black texture. Normal texture is going to default when we load it into a flat normal texture. And so we could add really anything in here that we wanted at this point. Don't forget, as you're creating instances, that you create them from your standard material. So now we can go metal, know, orange, material instance, metal, yellow. Start going into these, say albedo color. I want to adjust to a red, so let's give it all the blue, solid red material. Oh, sorry, this one was orange. Maybe 0.35 for an orange. We want this to be metal, so I'm going to turn it up to 1, and maybe our roughness. Kind of liking it at a 0 0.175. And then I'm done there. Our metal red, I actually don't want these textures anymore. We're just doing basic materials. Albedo color. And you can see as we turn on, use albedo texture, that vector parameter value here, in which case it was albedo color, disappears because that true false statement, that static switch parameter that we created is now flipping back and forth between either using a albedo texture or albedo color. We set it up that way. So I'm going to use albedo color, set it to red, no green, hit OK. 
metalness value of 1, roughness value of 0.175, save and close. And we're actually, uh, we should save our, our master material here. And you can see that. Now we can start to build several different materials on the fly, like we could in Max. And uh, yes, it was a little bit more work to set up here in the beginning, but now we're rolling and we have our master material. And it's easy now to create multiple instances. Metalness, one, roughness, 0.175, save. Yellow, red, orange, yellow, green, double click. Just watch me as I go in here and do some burying materials. So we're not really going to use our standard material on anything in the scene. It's just the foundation for all the materials that we will create for our for our uh, assets. Green, blue. I'm going to hold Alt and just drag these out. And I actually want to create some variation here. Plastic. Create material instance, we're gonna call this plastic, orange, albedo color. Let's do the same uh, red all the way, and then I believe it was 0.35. Okay, metalness is gonna be zero, we don't even need to turn it on. Uh, roughness. Create instance from the standard, plastic, yellow, I'm sorry, double click, change the color, roughness point one five, save. Understand that when I'm hitting Control S, I'm saving what I have selected in the content browser. You can do Save All, and it would also ask me to save my level that I'm actually building the scenes in. So don't think just because you're hitting Control S, you're saving your scene. You're saving really what you had selected in here. So maybe if you had maps, you see how Sandbox has a little asterisk next to it, even though I was over here, over here hitting Control S on everything. Go to Maps. Control S, and now I actually saved the level. Important to distinguish because I know some of you were struggling with that in class. Hmm. Yep, we'll call this plastic. Oops. Green. Plastic green. Double click. Color.
we go. So we have our basic materials set up and uh, you know maybe I want to demonstrate to you guys. Uh, let's go here. Actually, let's go to my graveyard. Resources. No. Be under art. Art. Graveyard. Assets. Uh, create example. So let me create an assets folder in here under the content. Uh, new folder. I'll we'll call this assets. I know I want to create a barrel folder. Maybe a crate folder. And I'm going to go ahead and add in. Hmm. Let's do this. Exports. Barrel wood. Hmm. Barrel wood. Boom. And it's asking me here. Here are all my import settings. I'm not going to mess with anything. Uh, yeah, import. Apparently, there was no, there weren't any smoothing groups on this. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and do the crate two. Exports. Oops, imported that into the wrong folder. Ooh, and that is not a low poly, it seems. So as this crashes. <laughs> oh no. Sorry about that. <laughs> Dealt with that. And let's just stick to the barrel for now. But we have our, uh, really, that should be called barrel. Albedo, but currently it's labeled as diffuse. I'm going to drag my textures. Looks like I only have a diffuse, normal, and an AO. Yeah, let's drag that AO in here too. Maybe we can talk about, see if I have time. Hmm. Barrel normal was imported as a normal map. Thank you, Unreal. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to right click and uh, create a material instance from my standard master material. I'll call this barrel. Hmm. Rename. We actually have to call it barrel material. Be specific here. And then I'm going to move it to my barrel folder. It's an instance of that master material, so as I change it in the materials folder, it'll change across the board in all of my instanced materials. And so we have, we have a couple of maps in here now. So what I can do, let's uh, use Albedo. Plug in my barrel texture. And then we want to turn on, well, let's drag our barrel out here. Boom. And apply our material. So use our normal map too. Let's plug a real normal map into this. Now we have uh, our high poly information showing. And so that's really the basic idea of these materials. You know, I could change it to a solid color. Maybe I want to make it the golden barrel.
So you can see how this sort of setup can become pretty powerful and create variations pretty quick. So I hope uh, this was helpful. I hope it helps you guys wrap up your homework and get you to see kind of where we're headed uh, in this class. Uh, thanks for watching.